Hey golf fans, this is Early1981 and welcome to the 2020 Valspar Championship at Innisbrook Resort Copperhead Course on the Virtual PGA Tour. I'm really looking forward to this one. We are going to be continuing the trend of playing with all aids off, all golf and aids turned off bar my swing shot feedback. This course was designed by the very talented Aces Are Wild and is one of the toughest courses on the PGA Tour. As you can see, we are going to compete against the AI on hard difficulty on the previous event where we played them on medium settings. It just didn't give us the challenge that was going to fully push me out there on the golf course. But bear in mind, guys, like I do say, the only thing we do have enabled is our short swing feedback, just so you guys can see how I'm swinging. So we've got no green grids, um, no aim and reticle, no wind speed gauge, no lag grid. So it really is going to be a tough challenge out here on one of the toughest courses in the game. For some reason, this has taken a long time to load up. There we go. So as you can see, we're playing off the longest tees, which is the black pin set number four, which I've never played on this course. Fairways are normal, greens are firm, green speed is fast. Everything else is left at default, bar the wind conditions, which are set to the exact conditions on the, the championship course, which is medium. So let's get right into this one. As always, I do hope you fantastic subscribers and viewers are well. And I hope everyone is looking out for their family and friends during this coronavirus pandemic. We are going to continue with playing with the pro clubs, guys. I think it's just a little bit more realistic for the yardage. But hole number one here is called Innisbrook View. It is a par 5 playing 560 yards, stroke index 17. Our tee shot here is critical. Really want to land this on the fairway. Oh, it's a bit of a wonky open and swing line. But anywhere left center of this fairway is ideal for teeing up our second shot. We are going to have to apply a good touch of fade here. Can't attack this. Going to have to play two iron and leave either a chip or a flop shot. Applying a touch of fade. Ball is slightly above our feet. So that should bring us back to the left as well. I've pulled that left. But it looks like we are going to find the left centre of this fairway. And that should leave us with a little flop shot. But the greens are the nine for being tough here. On pin set number four, like I say, guys, I've never played this. So fully lofted up the sandwich for the flop shot. Just want to get this close. See if we can set up a birdie opportunity here in the first hole. Beautiful execution. That should hopefully sit. Ooh, tell you what, that ball's veering off a little bit to the right there. So that tells me it should break slightly to the left. Green speeds are 178. Six footer. We've read that really, really well, and we do start off with an open and birdie here. At the Valspar Championship 2020, Dominguez, John Ram, S. Kim, all at the top of the leaderboard there as we do move on to hole number two, which is called Second Thoughts. Water does guard right-hand side here. And if we do go far too left, the green is blocked by the trees. So just looking to find left-hand side of this fairway. It should kick over to the right-hand side. But great tee shot there. It should set us up. With a wedge into this green. 124 yards out, up 7 feet. I think this gap wedge is bang on. Wind's going to take us right to the right. Ball at our feet is going to take us to the right as well. Ball's just below our feet. Let's see if we can get this one up towards the pin. Not happy with my swing line to begin with, but this should track really well. Greens are firm and fast. Came up a little bit short. Probably looking about a 10 foot putt here for a birdie. 11 feet. This one is definitely breaking a little bit left, I do feel. It did turn left, but we didn't allow enough for the break, and that is going to leave us with a little three to four foot putt for the par save here. Four footer. Shh. 
should turn, it does turn, and we do pick up a solid part. So let's check out the leaderboard. Dominguez, John Ram, Brooks Kopka, Adam Scott, S. Kim, all up there competing for the Valspar 2020 in the early stages. But hole number three is called Narrow Neck. This is a tough par four. Due to the water on the right-hand side, you've really got to be careful here. That wind should bring us around. There we go. There's a far better swing line. Jeez, oh, that wind has really moved me a lot more to the right than I expected it to. I would say we've got about a 6 to 7 mile per hour wind, but judging by that, it's maybe a little bit stronger. It's going to leave us 169 yards to the flagstick. Just deal off in a 7 iron. Wind should bring us round to the left. Once again, ball's above our feet. So it should move to the left as well. Two really good strikes. Oh, it's going to come up a little bit short. Should kick forward. Just caught that little uphill slope. And we do come up about 12 to 15 feet short. But we do have a birdie opportunity. 14 feet. Up three inches. This one's definitely breaking left. It's turning. Oh, as we... Oh, I tell you what. Good effort. Just slides by the left-hand side of the cup. And that's going to leave us with a little simple putt for the par from two feet, which we do convert, and we are going to remain one under. Adam Scott, S. Kim, John Ram, and Brooks Copa all making moves here. Xander Schufle as well. So let's move on to the first of the par threes, which is called Bunkered, playing 197 yards. Really going to have to loft up this 5 hybrid and play a touch of fade here. That trees are really in our way. Probably about a 7 mile per hour wind. So really try to fade this round, counteracting the wind and try to get this running up towards the pin. Beautiful execution. Oh, this is tracking well. This should give us a good birdie opportunity if it sits down. I tell you what, that's in. Oh my goodness guys, what an ace. You will not see a better shot ever on the Golf Club 2019. And if you haven't already done so, please hit the like button. That now puts us with that eagle at the top of the leaderboard, co-leader. As we do move on to hole number five, which is a par five. This one's playing 606 yards. And it is called Longview. This is a beautiful tree-lined uphill par five. And it is amongst... The hardest par fives on the PGA Tour. That wind has just taken us round into the centre of the fairway. And we've played that really, really well. This is actually one of the most photographed holes in golf. It is a stunning par five. The ball's really going to move left at our feet here. Just try to find the gap between these two trees. Oh, I've put a slow on that. That is now going to go to the right hand. Oh, I think we're actually going to hit the tree. Would you believe it? How's our luck? Oh, we managed to hold the fairway. Put a slow on that when I didn't expect to. But that's leaving us 121 yards to the pin. Down 15 feet. 8, 9 mile per hour wind. Just deal off in this sandwich. And see if we can get this landing short of the flag stick. Swinging a lot better now after the first three or four holes. This is on track. Is it going to sit on these firm greens? Bite. Ah, it didn't sit down. We must have caught a little slope there. And that's going to leave us with a little chip shot from the light rough. Fully lofting up this lob wedge. We're only five yards out. Just try to get this close. Please sit. Good effort. Tried to hit the flag stick. We failed due to our swing line. We've got a little through three footer. It does turn to the left. And we do disappointingly pick up par there. And the par fives, you've got to score here. But like I say, that is one of the toughest par fives on the, the PGA Tour. Adam Scott, the Aussie, top of the leaderboard at four under. So hole number six is a par four playing 465 yards. And this is called Sidewinder. It's a downhill dog leg right. The fairway should really bring us over to the left hand side here due to the slope. And it'll leave us a tricky approach shot into the sixth green. This 
this bunker is really protecting that pin. What a fantastic strategically placed bunker this is. 169 yards out. Wind's going to move us to the right. Ball's going to shoot to the left here at our feet. Seven iron is bang on for me. Just try to land this at the front of the green. Good execution. It needs to get down. It's a good shot. Is it going to sit? No. The firm, fast, fair uh, green's just taking that ball. That must be about 30 feet past the flag now. No reward for a good shot there. We are 30 feet past. One foot uphill. Got to be careful here with these 178 greens. I think it's breaking both ways. I'm just favouring the left edge. Should start to turn back. It didn't turn back, but I tell you what, it's a good putt. Good weight, and hopefully we can convert this little three-footer for the part. We knock that in, and we do remain at three under part. Adam Scott is pulling away at five under part. S. Kim, John Ram, Brooks Kopka, all on the leaderboard competing for the Valspar Championship. So, hidden gem. This is one of the easiest holes in the front nine. It's a par four. Pulled that one slightly left, but we should just about get away with that. I wanted to be on the right-hand side of this fairway, but due to that pull, we're fortunate that that tree on the left-hand side is not going to obscure our approach. Into the seventh green. Gap wedge just lofting us up a touch. Let's see if we can get this one fired right at the flag stick here. Need to land this two or three yards short at the pin. Oh, the wind's taking that away more than I expected it to. Is it going to hold? It does hold. We are going to have a birdie opportunity. Probably about seven to eight feet. Six feet. Certainly moving to the right here. Is it going to turn? Oh, it does turn. What a fantastic putt, despite a horrible putt putt, putt putt, despite a horrible putt line. And we do move up to four under one shot behind Adam Scott, who is on hole number 11. Hole number eight is called drop off, and this is a long par three, playing 235 yards. It's going to have to be two iron, going to have to deal off this. Setting us out. Aiming into the bunker, hoping this wind's going to have enough to pull us back round. What an execution. What a strike. Tell you what, this is tracking well. Yardage should be bang on. Is it going to turn towards the pin? No. So that's how I get my gauge for how the green's breaking, guys. I'll watch how the ball's tracking on its approach shot up towards the pin. This is a tough putt from 8 feet. I think it's breaking slightly right. I don't think there's a lot of movement in this one. Oh, there's more movement than I read. And that's went about 5 feet past. This could be a tricky putt for the par. It's only 3 feet. We do convert the par putt. And we are going to remain at 4 under par. Adam Scott is pulling away 6 under the Aussie. Wow. It's going to be so hard to shoot a six under on this course, guys. If I have a bogey, it's game over. I'm completely playing on a knife's edge here. Hole number nine is called Hideaway. This is an uphill um, fairway. Lots of bunkers protecting this hole. Decent swing. This is one of the shorter par fours on the course. It should give us about an eight or nine iron into this green. 151 yards out, up 21 feet. Look at that bunker. These are tough, tough pins, guys. I'm just going to deal off this eight iron. Just looking to come over the top of this bunker, find the fringe. Decent. Stay up. Stay up. It's short. Oh, we've came up short. We were about three yards from that being a really good shot. And with that, we've trickled all the way back into this bunker. And this is what I'm saying. I am playing on a knife edge here. 
this course is going to punish every mistake. It's going to highlight it. Just looking for about an 80% swing here. Oh, just when you didn't want backspin, the game goes and throws that in. And we've got a tough putt for par here. A little six-footer should just hold its line. Oh, wow. Look at my putt line. I think that affected it. I pulled that left. And we do drop a shot, guys. This is going to be so, so hard to go and win this competition now. Adam Scott's also bogeyed as well. So, we're still two shots behind. Hole number 10. This is called the descent. Very straight fairway here. That's a beautiful tee shot. Bunkers protect the green on both sides. But I am loving this. I really hope you guys are getting your golf fix from these one-round events. I do feel that the one-round events gives the AI a lot more chance than me shooting seven, eight, nine unders each round. So just lofting up this gap wedge, hoping the wind's going to carry us here. Just focusing on my swing. Oh, wow, horrible swing, and with that, it's going right and short. If that was more left, if we managed to hit the green, that would have worked out well. But like I say, every mistake that I execute here is going to be fully highlighted by this course. So just try to walk away with par here. Can't afford any more bogeys. That's going to leave us with about a three-foot putt for the par save. This one's just going to turn slightly right, and we do walk away with the par. Need to start gaining shots, but this course is so, so tough to walk away with birdies with no green grids. And we're still two shots behind. Joint second with Dominguez and Kim. John Ram climbing up the leaderboard also. Hole number 11 is called O's Valley, or O's Alley, should I say. This is a par 5. I need to get birdie here. Far better swing line. But if I do recall, it's a difficult green. Bunkers really protect this green when you're trying to get there in two. We've got about a 7 to 8 mile per hour win behind us. Look at that bunker. I think we're going to take this on. I may well either land in the bunker or we may just get over the top of it into the rough. Oh, stay up. Oh, we're punished. That ball is plugged. That is like a fried egg. 60 to 68%. Just going to deal off this and fully go at it. Hopefully it's going to have enough legs. It should run out well for us. Should run up a good few yards. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, it's going to be a difficult birdie putt. It's going to be a difficult birdie putt. I would have liked that closer. We've got a seven foot putt. I don't think there's huge movement in this. Certainly turning to the right. Oh, it's another poorly red putt. It's another par 5 where we don't make birdie. I think that's our second par 5 that we failed to walk away with birdie. And we're going to remain at 3 under par. Adam Scott's dropped another shot back down to 4 under. This is what that course can do to you guys as we do move on to hole number 12, which is called Bridge. Short par 4. This is the shortest par 4 on the course. So two iron. Can't play driver here. Oh, it's not the best of swings. This should leave us a seven or eight iron into that game. Do you know what? I think we could have played two wood there. 173 yards to go. Probably an eight to nine, nine mile per hour wind diagonal. Six iron gets there for me. Just deal off in it. Letting the slope and the wind do its work here. Let's see if we can get this close to the pin. Give us a birdie opportunity. We are fast on the night holes. Great execution. Come on, wind. Oh, it's short. It's another bunker. 
it's another bunker. These hazards are really, really in play. I love that with this pin set. So let's see if we can flop this out. Get this close and save par. Get in. Oh my goodness. We needed a bit of luck there. We didn't get it. We rattled the flag stick. On another day that may have dropped for birdie. But we do walk away with par. And we're still one shot behind Adam Scott and S. Kim now. Shaw the Canadian making moves. Hole number 13. It's another par 3 and this is called Force Carry. Water is hugely in play here. I'm just going to have to come down to 5 iron. Try to fade this. Trying to get this close to the flag stick. Taking a risk here but I've got to start taking risks. It's decent. The fade should kick in. This could be good. This could be really, really good. We've already aced one of the par threes. Sit down. Sit down. It's another great golf shot, guys. I don't see how I could have got any closer than that with the contours of these greens. And that's going to give us a birdie opportunity from 14 feet. It is uphill, so we can attack this one slightly. Breaking both ways, I think. I think it's breaking more to the right. It's so, so hard to accurately read. Should start to turn. Oh, it did break both ways, but it turned more to the left. It's another poor read. And I tell you what, that is not an easy putt for par. A four-footer. This one's certainly breaking right. Just going left of the flag. Oh, and just drops on the edge. Maybe played that a little bit too firm. And we do stay at three under. S. Kim dropping shots. Jack Nicholas, the golfing legend, moving up the leaderboard. Hole number 14 is called Packard's Double Dog Leg. This really is a signature hole, this one. Length and accuracy are called for off the tee. It's a long par five. Never reaching this green in two. And I think we couldn't have placed that ball better with our hands if we tried. Still 298 yards to go. No shortcuts at all here due to the tree line. Ball's going to move to our left at our feet and due to the wind. So just try to chase this two wood as far down the fairway as possible and leave us a pitch shot. Need to walk away with birdie here, guys. It's the easiest hole in the course. Pulled that one slightly left. Should work out really, really well, though. Could even be a lob wedge. This could actually be a full lob wedge into the green. No. 67 yards. Probably about 6 to 7 mile per hour wind in our face. Got to pitch this close. Just lofting this up a touch. It is 10 feet uphill. Firm, fast greens. Ball should run out well for us. I think five under is going to win this event. Great execution. Oh, this should be bang on. Come on. Oh, wow. How quick is that sat down? I can't believe how quick that sat down. Clearly caught that uphill slope. We've got a 16-foot putt up four inches for the birdie. I think this is moving slightly. It's moving both ways. I think it breaks more to the right. Turn, turn, turn. Oh, wasn't a bad read. Didn't break as much as I had hoped it would. It's another par 5 we failed to birdie. But this is such a tough course, guys, when old green grid's turned on. Jimmy Walker as well. Bryson DeChambeau. What a fantastic leaderboard, by the way. As we move on to the final par 3 of the course, and this is called the Bite. This is a downhill par 3. Playing 201 yards to the flag. Picturesque view here, by the way. Bunkers on either side. Five iron for me. Just reliant on that wind to take us. Oh, what a horrible swing line. And with that, we're going a lot more left than I had hoped. We're going to be severely punished where we're long there as well. 
really in between clubs. This is going to be a monster putt for birdie. We're fast running out of birdie opportunities here, guys. Wait a minute. I've actually said this is a final par 3. There's not. I think the 17th is a final par 3. That really needs to start swinging back. Good weight on it. Maybe a little bit short. I, it's, it's imperative I walk away with par here, though. Five-footer. Very little movement in this one. Just going to zap it in. Drilled that home with pace. And we're still sitting at three under par. One shot behind Adam Scott. Shaw Kim back at three under. John Ram. I don't know why that V has changed to a P. It's maybe Thomas Peters of Belgium. But hole number 16. Par four. Playing 476 yards. Want to keep this on the left hand side of the fairway. This is called the moccasin. It's going to leave us a long approach shot into this wide green. But we've boomed that 309 yards. Still a lot of work to do. Oh, pin is right at the back of the green here, which actually suits us. Got about an 8 mile per hour wind. It's going to take us to the left diagonally, so just to play on a touch. Apply the touch of fade here and just deal off in the 7 iron. I've got to get this close to the pin. We have to. Good execution. That fade's not kicked in. Maybe our swing line, which is a bit of an etch -a sketch just took us a wee bit more to the left. So we are going to have a chip shot from the light rough here. 10 yards out. But why, wow, guys, this is such a tough course. Like I say, sit down, sit down. Fantastic chip shot, really, really good. And hopefully we can walk away unscathed here with the par and remain at three under with two holes to play. Great putt, great up and down there. Absolutely delighted with that. As we do move on to the final par three of the course, and this one is called the Rattler. It's a long par 3. Very narrow green. Bunkers protecting the pin. That tree as well is in play. But 5 hybrid for me. Gotta get this close. It's decent. I like it. Get down. Get down. Is it going to sit? Is it going to sit? It's not a bad, it's not a bad tee shot. It's going to give us a birdie opportunity, probably about 14 feet, 16 feet, four inches downhill. I really need to birdie this, guys. Just going to go all out here. I think it's just turning slightly both ways. Hard read. Just favour on the left. It should turn back. I tell you something. What a putt that is, guys. And we're going down the 18th as co-leader with Adam Scott. You couldn't write this up. John Ram, S. Kim, Jimmy Walker, Bryson DeChambeau. The final hole of the 2020 Valspar Championship. This is called Copperhead. It's a beautiful uphill finishing hole. Fairway is protected by bunkers on each side. We do manage to find... The middle of the fairway with a fantastic tee shot. And I tell you what, guys, I really, really hope you're enjoying watching this as much as I am in playing this. I am actually sweating now. I'm an aggressive player. I'm going all out to win this event. I did say about three, four holes ago, five under would win this. Just going to loft up this five iron into about a three, four mile per hour wind. 28 feet. The green is above us. Need a good shot here. Oh, it's a beautiful execution. Stay up. Stay up. This has got a chance of being half good. Is it going to sit? I tell you what, it's a great approach shot. It's going to leave us with about a nine foot putt for the birdie. Nine feet bang on. I've got to be aggressive and take this on, guys. I'm convinced it's breaking left. 
get in. Oh, it's broke a lot more. I should have maybe just took my time with that one. I need to make this par just to to share the tournament win. A six footer up two inches. It's turning right, I think. It did turn right, and would you believe it, guys? We went and threw it away on the last hole. Would you believe it? Need this for the bogey. Four footer should turn to the left. There you go. That is probably going to make us finish second. But what an event, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. We do finish behind Adam Scott. But that is it for the virtual 2020 Valspar Championship at Copperhead. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Until the next video, take care, peace out, and love you all. Bye.